Hi there! My name's Robin Johns, and I'm the Knowledge and Training Director here at Cato Networks. I'm pleased to announce that Cato now has a Cloud Access Security Broker within the product. Now, Cloud Access Security Broker is sometimes called CASB, so if you're a fan of acronyms, it's there for you. But if you have no idea what CASB is whatsoever, don't fret, don't be scared. There's lots of people out there just like you. And I'm here to provide you a brief tour of what Cato can offer as part of the CASB solution. So let's go over to the all new Cato management application. Now, as you can see, it's quite empty in here. It's quite lonely, but don't, we'll fret, don't fret. We'll, we'll get to that. Currently, we can see we just have one user connected here, a Robin Johns connected into the network. Now here's where CASB can start coming in useful. CASB comes in four main flavors. You have the visibility, you have the assessment, you have the enforcement, and you have the review. Don't worry, we'll get there. Let's start with visibility. What is happening on my network? And what is the overall health and risk of my applications? I'm going to go over to the Cloud Apps dashboard. This is a new dashboard brought in with the Kato CASB functionality. After clicking this dashboard, you can see quite a few elements. We can see the total quantity of high-risk applications. We can see how many applications have been discovered. Ooh, 33 with 28 new over the last two days, nice. We can see the total quantity of users identified, and this is only a small account. We can see the overall network usage over these past days. We can see our top applications by sanctioned or unsanctioned variances. We can see all the application risk breakdown. We can see which where the applications on the network have been headquartered in the handy dandy geo map. We can see the top categories and much more. But you might feel a little overwhelmed here. So let's just drill this down. Let's start focusing on the analysis or the, the visibility of what's happening. Now, say you log in in the morning and you come here and you say, oh, let's have a look at the top apps by unsanctioned usage. And I can see we have LinkedIn, we have Wistia, we have Twitter, we have Facebook. And you think, oh, I've never actually seen Wistia on my network before. I don't know what it is. I want to know more about it. So there's a very easy way. We can hover over Wistia. We can click on the name and get taken to our Cloud Apps Catalog. Our Cloud Apps Catalog is an index of all our cloud applications that we identify, and we can get a little information. So let's expand it. After expanding this, I can see a general overview of what this application is, a business overview. I can see where this business or application is headquartered, their corporate website, their operating size, and their operating state. Now here's where it gets really interesting. We can also see compliance information. So if you're a business that have to make sure that every single application being used is PCI DSS compliant, we can show that for you, as you can see here. Alternatively, if you're fortunate enough to not have to follow any compliance regulation, we can show you security information. So does this appliance, does this vendor support multi-factor authentication or single sign-on or trusted certificates? All of this is available for you without you having to go and do the legwork yourself because really who has the time to do that or who wants to do that? Cato takes all of these data points plus a whole bunch of other metadata, flow analysis and heuristic analysis on the back end and merges it down together to provide you with a handy dandy simple risk score. As we can see here, it says three. So we take all of this information, we do the heavy lifting so you don't have to. Now, going back to the Cloud Apps dashboard, we can see that we have multiple applications here with different risks. Now, on the topic of risk, we rank it between zero and nine. A nine is generally a riskier application than a zero, but it does not necessarily mean this application is malicious. It just means that this application is more likely to pose a risk to your business or, or organization. If, you, if your users are using a application which hasn't been vetted by any auditing compliance, it doesn't do secure data handling or IT handling policies, that poses a risk to your business. And by pro us, Hazel, providing you with this information, it allows you to make the risks and judgment analysis and calls that you want. Now, say we've looked at this network. We know we have LinkedIn, we have Wistia, we have Twitter, Facebook, and I want to say that Wistia is an improved application. I like it, I shouldn't worry about it. In that case, we can move it from sanctioned or unsanctioned to a sanctioned group. As you can see, sanctions currently blank here. So if I go to this handy dandy search bar and I go to my categories, here it is. We have the sanctioned apps category and I want to add an app to the sanctioned app category. 
I'll move myself out so you can see it everything. Let's choose the members and we'll choose application. And the application was Wistia. Wonderful. We click apply. By doing this, we can now start building up a list of applications which have been approved for use on your business network. By doing this, you can start to understand which applications do you have, which ones are approved on the system, which vendors do you currently engage with, which tools and platforms do you already have. And by doing this, you can slowly start building... Ooh, don't forget to click save. Don't forget to click save. By doing this, you can slowly start to build up a profile of what is or isn't allowed on your network. So when I log in tomorrow, this Wistia Inc. will move from the unsanctioned to sanctioned category, which means that all of the data coming into unsanctioned will start to be the new applications which can pose an immediate risk to your business if not controlled. Very easy, very simple. Now, this Cloud Apps dashboard is unique compared to any other CASB vendor out there because it's integrated with our Cato Single Pass Cloud Engine, which means all of the data that comes through your backbone today all of the data going through your firewalls and the IPS engines and across your corporate backbone, this all gets populated pretty much immediately when you turn on the CASB license. No extra configuration needed, no heavy lifting, nothing to install, nothing to deploy. You turn it on and it works. Then it's just up to you to categorize the apps of yes, this is allowed or yes, that isn't allowed. That's visibility and assessment altogether. But what if you wanted to take it further? Ah, we've got something for you. In that case, we would come up here to security, and this is where the fun begins. By going to security and then application control policy, we can start doing stuff. You can see it's currently disabled, so let's enable it and save this policy. Now, once you have started to understand what is happening on your network, this is the opportunity for you to start controlling what's happening on your network. So I'm going to move myself out of the way so you can see everything. And I'm going to go over here and choose new. I want to create a new profile. I want to create a new cloud app rule. I want to control what is happening to the individual applications on my network. And I'm going to come here and just give it the name of Robin because autocomplete is there and it makes it easier for me. The description, let's say testing. These are just general descriptors that'll allow you to make a judgment call in the future. I often use these because I have a very short term memory, so all fun. After doing this, we define a severity. Do you personally believe that this is high risk, medium risk, or low risk? This is up to you. This is a independent judgment. So we have the, the basic information. Now I want to choose an application. With applications, we can go either very broad or keep it very narrow. But I'll start by going very broad. In this theoretical scenario, I want to look at any application on my network whatsoever, any application. And this application has to have a criteria. This criteria, I want it to, let's say, I want everything to be SOC 2 compliant. Every single application on my network to be used, I want it to be SOC 2 compliant. So I want to say, if SOC 2 is false, bear with me, <laughs> and if SOC 2 is false, the action would be to monitor. And once I choose monitor, I can specify an event or an email notification to get a digest, either hourly, immediately, daily, or weekly. By saving this rule, I am now creating a passive rule for every single application and every single flow to see if this application does not have a SOC 2 criteria, we get notified. And from that, you can start auditing your network, and making very wide sweeping statements. But say you didn't want to worry about SOC 2. Say we can want to get a little bit deeper. Let's, go, let's drop down one level. Maybe I wanted to say application is PCI DSS is false. So if an application is PCI DSS false, it doesn't have that certification, I want to do something. I want to change the source. I don't want this to apply to all users and all sites anymore. I want this to apply to an individual floating subnet or global range or group or host or interface subnet or individual. We can do that. Maybe I choose SDP user and I just want this to apply to Robin Johns. Maybe you wanted this to just apply to your finance department, or if you want this to just apply to the people handling your data processing, you can do that. And you can choose that from monitor to block. And in a few clicks, I have now created a rule that would block any time, any time Robin Johns tries accessing a non-PCI DSS compliant application, they get blocked. Very wide, very, very broad. 
but that's still not quite so fun. Nobody enjoys compliance. I mean, I don't enjoy compliance. You might. I'm, you know, once again, not here to judge. I'm here to inform. But I think that's not so exciting. So let's change the criteria. Let's remove all this. And let's go in the application. Let's change it from any application to, ooh, I don't know, Slack. Just, just an example. We'll change it to Slack. If you notice, when you change to an individual application, we have a little shield here to say, I haven't sanctioned this app. I can add an activity to Slack. I now have the options for deleting messages or logging in or logging off or sending a message or sending a file. We can start controlling that. I could say anytime Robin John sends a file on Slack or anytime he tries to delete a message, we can do actions. We can block this. We can monitor this. We can allow this. You can start tracking and trending the individual application behavior of your users. Your users can still use the application they use every day, but you have a greater control about how they use the applications. You can control what they do and when they do it. And once again, this can apply to not just one individual, that can apply to entire groups, active directory groups, subnets, IP address ranges, and more. So in the event you want to secure your, your network and you don't want data to accidentally leak or exfiltr be exfiltrated by individuals, you can start tracking, controlling, and moderating all of this yourself quite easily. Alternatively, I'm just thinking of another use case. Say your marketing department says, I want everybody to like and share this video on your socials. Go and subscribe. But you're worried about your workers actually hopping on YouTube during the midday because remote working is a little too easy to start staring at YouTube and getting distracted. In that case, let's go here and choose YouTube. I'm going to choose YouTube. And the granular activity for YouTube might be for watching streams. I want to block people from watching streams. And I want... Ooh, let's minimize this. I'll choose the source as any. So anybody in the company, if they try to watch a YouTube stream, they cannot. They can go onto the YouTube page. They can see the page load. But when they try to get the video, they get that joyous spinner of death. You can still like, share, and subscribe, but you can't actually watch videos. Unless you change the time of this rule and how it applies. The default is that there's no time constraint, which means this rule applies all day, every day. But theoretically, you could choose for this rule to limit just to working hours, or you can set a custom time for this rule to apply. So theoretically, your employees can watch YouTube on their corporate devices outside of working hours, but in their core working period, ah, that's blocked. That's not allowed. But this is enough talk. Let me show you a brief demo of a CASB policy in action. And for this one, I will come on here and choose Twitter. Everybody loves or despises Twitter. It's up to you. <laughs> I'll choose Twitter. And the activity that I want to, to block, sorry, let's just choose Twitter. Would help if I typed correctly. The activity I'd like to block with Twitter is posts. I would like to block the ability for Twitter users to post. We want to specify the source, which is anybody. I don't want anybody tweeting on this network. And I want, want no time constraint at all. And I want to block and then send and create an event. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to move myself away again, just so you can see. The application is Twitter. The activity is post. And the action is block and having an event. I will click apply. And now I've clicked apply. I need to click the save button. Don't forget to click save. Now, if I hop on over to Twitter, let's bring myself back. I'm on Twitter and I've rarely used Twitter, so ignore all of these posts. I'm just going to go onto Twitter and say it's Tuesday and tweet that. It all works fine. It all works dandy. Why is this? Why is it not working? Good question. The reason being is that I am not connected to the Cato cloud. You can see I'm disconnected. It's not working. But what happens if I connect to the Cato cloud? Let's find out. I'll click this button. I'll wait for it to connect. As you can see, it only takes a few seconds to actually connect to the Cato cloud. And now I've done this, I can go back to Twitter and see if the policy has actually been enforced. Now that we've applied the rule, let's go over to Twitter and see what actually happens. So we can see we have our previous It's Tuesday item, a nice tweet. 
let's post another tweet. I'll come up here. What's happening? I'll say, it's Tuesday again. Oh, caps lock for cool. I'll hit that tweet and it says, oh no, something went wrong. Now this is user experience. What we're effectively doing here is taking the Twitter API call with seeing the slash create tweet item and we're preventing it from happening. So users can still come on Twitter, they can still browse, they can still peruse and catch up with their latest hot celeb goss. But if they actually want to do any posting, if they do want to do any tweeting, they can't. They don't have that power. And this is a way that you can start controlling, policing and actually making a security impact to your network without having to worry about being far too intrusive to your overall employee base. This is a way for you to start understanding which applications have associated risks and taking control of that risk yourself by allowing certain elements or segments of applications to work. Now let's go back over to the Kato management application. We have a simple rule. And don't worry, we're coming near the end. But you might want to worry, wonder, worry? Try that again. You might want to know, once this has actually happened, how can you start tracking the rules? Well, that's quite easy. First, we go back up to the monitoring tab at the top of the page, and then once that's loaded, we go across to the events. The events page, as you can see, is over here on the left hand side. And by clicking events, our event analytics window opens. We can change the presets from here down to app security. And now we can see under app security, we have individual block events happening for Robin Johns. I can expand this event. And now we can start seeing what happened, where it happened, when it happened, how and when. Okay, folks. So thank you once again for your time today. I hope you enjoyed our quick Hasby walkthrough. And if you'd like any more information, please contact your Cato Networks account representative and we'd be happy to help you. Until next time, bye for now.